the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the holy great martyr George, uh, who was one of the, uh, who was a soldier, who was a great defender against the Arian heresy, and who has entered into the, uh, into the remembrance of the church, and certainly into the imagination of the church, um, and into, in, a, in, in, that, in a, that very positive way. Uh, and, and that remembrance of St. George merges with our expectation and with our experience of his protection, of his, of his uh, presence, of his constant guarding of the Christian world. And it's an interesting thing that in the Holy Land, at least until the present uh, tragedy, that Christians and Muslims and even Jews would come to his tomb and venerate his memory. Uh, and today, um, as has been happening now for a number of, a number of days, his tomb is, is just flowing with myrrh um, in, in vast quantities, uh, something that's something very unusual. And so we have to ask St. George, who is the great protector. Certainly, he's the protector of Moscow, he's the protector of Britain, but he's also especially the protector of the, of the faithful Christians of Palestine, uh, that he will rise up and that he will, he will defend them against all the foes that, uh, that try to, to, uh, to destroy the church, that that are the enemies of Christ, that are the enemies of, of the gospel, and that, and that by his almighty power, by, which is nothing other than the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, those enemies will be defeated and their rebellion against Christ and the gospel be put down. And that we might, and we pray that peace might be returned to the faithful people of the Middle East. Because it's not only the people of Palestine, it's the Christians in, in Syria, the Christians in Lebanon, the Christians in, in Jordan, and Georgia, of course, um, and throughout the world who look to his, to his protection, to his, and uh, to his guidance. How important it is a role that the saints assume in the life of, our, of the church. Even those who have, have been gone for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, such as St. George, and yet their, their relics, their tomb, their, their memory provides a place of, uh, of reconciliation and a place of peace where people can come together. Let us pray that St. George exercises that so that as he, on one hand, overthrows the enemies of Christ and the gospel, he brings, he brings all people in, in that area to peace. And that he accompanies all of those who are facing martyrdom, all of those who, have, um, who are being persecuted for their faith, who are so many in these days, that he might lead them into the heavenly kingdom and that he might, he might strive to protect them from the evil of the enemy. We live in, in horrific times. It's not so apparent to us here, though certainly the forces of the forces of evil, the forces of Antichrist, which are precisely the forces of the world. It's, so, it's important for us as Christians to remember that the word secular means of the world. It's precisely the words that are used, it's a Latin word, but it's precisely the word that's used in the Latin translation of of that passage that we heard in the scriptures. Those who love the world hate God 
and they hate those who love God. And to the extent that we compromise with the world, to the extent that we compromise with the secular agenda, to that extent we compromise our faith, we compromise our integrity, and we compromise our commitment to Christ and the gospel. Truly, this is a real battle. It's the, ba- it's, it's the ultimate battle. That battle for the integrity of a life lived according to the gospel of Jesus Christ, a life lived not, that not according to the, to the standards and the values of this world, but according to the values of the kingdom of heaven and the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what the cost. And for how many Christians today who will go to meet the Lord at the hands of those who martyr them, have have they refused to to compromise with the world which hates Christ and the gospel? and which hates us and our church and our devotion to God. There's a great cost to being a Christian. We saw what that cost was in the Soviet Union. That same cost is something I'm afraid that we also will see even here. So brothers and sisters, let us entreat St. George for his protection, that he might rise up against the enemies of Christ and the gospel, that he might protect those faithful believers who strive with all of their lives and all of their minds and hearts and souls to be faithful to Jesus Christ and the gospel, and not to compromise with the world. But also when we have to give answer before the magistrates and before the synagogues and before the courts of men, that he might stand with us and give us the courage to confess our Lord Jesus Christ and accept whatever it is in this world that is meted out to us and that we might always remember those those words of our Lord Jesus Christ, behold, I have overcome the world. Christ is risen. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages.